Hi guys, welcome back. Mr. Adams here and welcome to Medicine Introduction Lesson 3. Now in this video lesson we are going to build on the skills that we have introduced uh, in Introductory Lessons 1 and 2 and today we are going to focus on um, our ability to describe change. Now if we start by referring um, back to this slide that we've used before with the yellow boxes here couple of quick reminders remember what we're looking at is a development study so um, what has changed and stayed the same in medicine through time uh, and remember we're tackling this big chunk of time 800 years so we're looking for an effective way of being able to break this down now in terms of doing that um, we're going to break this down into two main sections so if you're looking at something that's changed we're interested Firstly, in the pace of change, okay, by which we mean how quickly did things change. Now, there'll be loads of examples in, in history, uh, in life in general, where things have changed and they've changed at different speeds. Okay, so sometimes things take a long time to change. They are changing, but they take a long time actually to change. Sometimes things change quite quickly. Okay, so then we need to be able to, to use um, to nice descriptive language to help us um, describe the pace of these change, how quickly these changes are going about. So in terms of the language that we that we could use, if we if we take the pace of change first, instead of just saying something has changed, we want to get across the speed at which it has changed. So if it's if it's changed quite slowly, we might use phrases like this. It was a gradual change, it was a steady change, it was a slow change. If things have changed really quite quickly, what we might want to use then are things like this. It's a rapid change, a dramatic change, sudden change. This was a turning point. Okay? Now what you've done there by, giving, uh, by using this language, and we'll see this in, in, in play in an example shortly, is you have um, described to somebody who doesn't know this topic um, basically what is going on with these changes. Okay, when, was, when were things changing quickly? When were things changing more slowly? And equally, we apply the same, the same principles to the extent of change. Well, how big was the change? Okay, there's some, some changes that, that really aren't that, aren't that big, so we might call them a small-scale change, or we might call them a less significant change. So to see this in action, we're going to have a go at um, looking at this graph here. And um, this is a really, really good graph to do this with, because even before telling you what it's about, you can clearly see that something is going on with these lines, uh, with these lines here, because at different points on this graph, these lines look very, very different. Now, what this graph is actually showing you is average life expectancy in years up the side, and time periods across the bottom. Okay, so what we're seeing here is how the average life expectancy of men, which is the blue line, and women, which is the red line, has changed in England across a significant, large period of time. Right, if we look at the bottom axis, the time periods probably start before our before our medicine course begins, uh, and the earliest probably one you've got here is about the year um, about the year ten hundred. And it goes all the way up to sort of the year 2050, so sort of making project projections into the future here. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to encourage you to do here at this point is to pause this video and just to get a pen and paper or, or whatever and jot down a few things about this graph that you might want to um, find out. Okay, I think this graph is brilliant for this because there are, there are very clearly... Um, some differences between the start point and the end point of the graph and, and, and along the way as well. So, um, you know this is about average life expectancy now, how long people are expected to live across different periods of time. So, write yourself down a few things that you might want to find out as you go through this course um, about this graph. So, hopefully you've got a, a few bits down there. Um, and we're going to now go through the graph and highlight a few of the areas um, and, and try to develop our, our ability to describe what is going on. So the first area I'm going to highlight is uh, is in the green box there. Now, 
this is really interesting, isn't it? What we've what we've got here from the start of the graph, which is as I said, probably about the year ten hundred, probably all the way through to about sixteen fifty, the lines are completely flat. Now, what that's telling us is that life expectancy, so how long people were expected to live for, didn't really change at all across six hundred and fifty years. Now, what we would say here is that um, in terms of life expectancy, we had. Uh, continuity in life expectancy. But that's not good enough, is it? We want to be able to describe that. Second point that I'm going to highlight on the graph is in our green circle here. Um, so if we look down, this is probably about 1700, 1750. Um, and what we're seeing now is we're starting to see some change. Okay, if we focus more specifically here on the red line, so life expectancy for women in this time period, um, we can see that line starts to go um, in an upwards direction. Okay, so what we're starting to see is change here. Again, though, we don't just want to leave this as, okay, so there was some change. We want to describe. Final area that I have um, highlighted is uh, is this bit in the green in the green circle here. So we're looking again, probably now at about. Uh, the late 1800s, 1900, 1920, something like that. Okay, Now, this bit's really interesting, isn't it? Suddenly these lines are going almost vertically. So they're, they're changing, and they're changing a lot, and they're changing a lot in a really short period of time. So in terms of what the graph is telling us here is that the, the life expectancy is increasing and increasing quite quite quickly for people. You know, if we took the, uh, if we took the red line again, so we looked at life expectancy for women in, say, 1850, we're talking probably roughly about 45. Um, if we went uh, from 1850, went to 1950, we're, we're talking up to 70. So significant increases here. And we want to get across this point in the way we describe it. Okay, so if we refer back now to our yellow boxes, um, these are the skills that we have uh, developed, introduced, employed across these three introductory lessons. Okay, so now we should be fairly comfortable um, at the very least, um, in terms of what the approach that you're going to take is to note what has changed, use our factors to try and explain why it has changed. Okay, so finally, what we want to do is um, give you something to go away and have a bit of a look at yourselves with this. So um, I want you to think of some examples, maybe aim for three, of things that have changed in your lifetime or well, ne doesn't necessarily have to be your lifetime uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be to do with medicine or indeed to do with what you studied before in history what we want to do here is have a bit of a practice at this idea of looking at what has changed so you need to find something that has changed uh, why has it changed and then describe the change so how much has it changed how quickly has it changed etc now i'll give you an example here and i am going to pick on in terms of what has changed, the way in which we access information and communicate with people. So if we start with this, this is a picture of my first ever mobile phone from probably about the year 2000. This is a Philips Cellnet, um, complete with aerial and very, very, very small screen. Okay. And then if we go on 20 years time, uh, I've got a picture here of um, an, an Alexa tool. Um, so. Uh, what we can see here in terms of how things have changed over time, the change that I'm looking at, so our first yellow box, what changed, is uh, the way we communicate um, and the way we access information. And then the second yellow box, the why did it change, that's where I will refer back to things like our factors. Um, so in this case, I might look at the factor of science and technology. So what I know is that over this period of time of 20 years, uh, technology has uh, improved and as a result we've gone from mobile phones to smart technology and smartphones to things like sort of more smart tech like Alexa that can I don't know, turn, your, turn your lights on and off in your house, things like that. Um, then in terms of our final yellow box, I'd, I'd want to explain to somebody and describe this change to somebody. So I would talk about the fact that this has occurred over, over a short period of time and has changed quite a lot. So I'd describe this as maybe... Um, uh, maybe a, not necessarily a sudden change, but a rapid change. Okay, there's been a rapid development of technology because things have improved in that sense um, really quite quickly. 
Um, I might also look at it and say, well, it's widespread because the way we access information now is is, is pretty much the sort of the same for everybody. We, we access it through the means of things like the Internet and these types of technologies. So not only is this a rapid change, but it is a, it's a significant change. It's a big change to how we go about doing things. OK, so if we go away and have a bit of a think of um, some examples that you could use. Uh, for this as well and just have a go at running them through these three yellow boxes so what is it that's changed why is it that it's changed and how much has it changed okay and if you need to go back and, and and look at bits of these videos that we've that we've done so introductory video one two and three and that should help you with this okay see you all soon bye